Senator Roisin Garvey here, Deputy Leader of the Green Party, with my esteemed colleague, Minister and Leader of the Green Party, Roger O'Gorman. Hi, Roisin. How are you doing? Good to see you. You too. We're you back. Too. We are. We're back, uh, ready for a very busy uh, couple of weeks, couple of months ahead, budget, and uh, who knows what else. Who knows? Um, you. I was looking at your uh, Instagram the other day. You have had a uh, 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 big homecoming for the uh, Clare Senior Hurling team in uh, in, in Ina, and they had uh, the Ian McCarthy Cup with them. That was a that was a big big day for, oh. for you and uh, and all your community. Well, the whole county's still beaming. We're I'm still, sure. Yeah. We're still relishing it. Yeah, yeah. It's been a great summer. Yeah. For hurling for Clare, it's been great for all the young kids in Clare. They're mm-hmm. such good role models yeah. for lads. And in our own parish, we had uh, four players on the squad. And yeah. in that picture, I'm with David Fitzgerald and Aidan McCarthy, two of the most humble, capable men I've met in a long time. So, yeah, it's been brilliant. And did you en- did you inspire them? Did your win in the Green Party leadership in- inspire them a little bit? <laughs> I don't bit? know. Was actually, a couple, the same week, wasn't a it? couple of them did message yeah. me actually saying, well done. <laughs> oh, and I was wow. like, well, now it's your turn, lad. That's so. amazing. That's yeah, amazing. no, it's, yeah. it's been a really yeah. positive. I hadn't expected any kind of repercussions of being the deputy leader, but mm. I didn't know we'd never have, we've never had a deputy leader of any, of any national party mm-hmm. in the county. So, yeah, even some of the hurlers did message me yeah. before the All-Ireland. So, oh, wow. it was a good week yeah. for Clare. And you were, you were there, you were, you were in uh, Croke Park. Yeah, yeah myself yeah. and my dad went. Oh, uh, nice. Yeah, the ticket thing was mad, but yeah. we all got there in the end, and it was Sunday. Every time I think about it, I just grin. I kept saying to all the hurlers, thanks so much for bringing so much joy. They brought <laughs> so sure, much joy to sure, the county. Yeah, yeah it's yeah, been fantastic. Yeah. Brilliant, brilliant. So you've brilliant. been you've been busy. It's been a bit mental, the whole tax hoard, the land hoarding thing. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's talk about that a little bit, Roger, because I'd like it to be really clear for me. There's been some mixed messages and twisting of the story as mm-hmm. usual. Yeah. But uh, you can lay it out clear, maybe. Um, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll do my best. We're in the midst of the housing crisis right now, and uh, every step, that we can take to get more houses built, the government should be taking. I think everyone, everyone agrees with that. In Housing for All, which is the, the government strategy to tackle the housing crisis, we set out that where someone has land that is zoned for housing and is serviced, so it has the, the electricity, the water, it's ready to go, and they're sitting on that and they're not using it, they should pay a tax. They, there should be a cost to that because we need to get that land. And if they're not going to use it, they should sell it on to someone who, to, who, who is going to use it. Um, so this tax is provided for. It got deferred at last year's budget because the, the Department of Finance said we need to map out in the country where these sites are. We don't know exactly where there is. Fair enough, it has to be deferred for a year. Uh, and now there's some talk of it being deferred again. Uh, and it's my view and it's the, the Green Party's view. And I think it's the view of most people I've spoken to that land hoarders shouldn't be getting away with this. They should have to pay a tax if they're not bringing their land into into use. Now, one very fair point that has been made is that if you have a farmer who's farming land and his land got rezoned, um, he shouldn't, he or she shouldn't have to pay the tax. Which is the point we were making. Yeah, which is the, the point. Green Party made yeah, that point. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. That, this tax is not for farmers who are actively using their land, it's for land hoarders. So the, the law actually excludes those farmers at the moment. Now, I understand the IFA and some of the farming groups, they feel that exclusion isn't clear enough, it's not working well enough. Fine, let's let's sort that out. Mm-hmm. We don't want active farmers paying this tax. Um, but I think we can do that within the next four weeks. So I know the Department of Finance are, have gone away now and they're looking to see what resolution they can bring to this. And I'm I'm really hopeful that they can bring us something that excludes farmers as a carve out for farmers, but makes sure that people who are sitting on land that could be used for housing, pretty much waiting for it to increase in, in, in value, that's not acceptable. They have to pay. I mean, it's so frustrating when you think about it, because in Clare from four years ago, the first thing I spoke about in the Senate was the need for, if we want to start with the housing crisis, we need water infrastructure yeah. and electricity infrastructure. So here we have land that has both those yeah. things and we can be building houses now, whereas mm-hmm. we have places in Clare, I can take the towns and villages straight away that have the land, mm-hmm. they have the people who want to build on the house, on the land, but they haven't got the infrastructure. Mm-hmm. So it seems so insane. And I think it's really important to say as well that the vast majority of this land has nothing to do with farmers. It's owned by developers mm-hmm. and investors or, um, that have money and can sit on this land hoping to increase the price. Yeah. But yeah, they need to be hauled over the coals at this stage. It's ridiculous mm-hmm. because it takes so long to get infrastructure of any kind. And we were waiting four years for water infrastructure for Liscanner. We can't wait four years mm-hmm. if we have land that already has this infrastructure. Yeah. And I, there's so few farmers involved in this anyway yeah. that the narrative, the story has to be that we focus on these people who are just speculators 
and investors and we need to get them to pay tax. Yeah, they need to pay this tax and they either pay the tax or they sell this land on. Uh, for someone who is going to build in it or they build in it themselves. Those are the options. And I think those are in the midst of the housing crisis. They're all very legitimate for the government to force their hand. Yeah, very important. It's great. You were so strong on that. Um, so we are going to have some good news. Yeah. You've been working really hard. Probably the best I've ever heard from any minister. You have, as Minister for Children, you've really put children in the centre. And mm-hmm. I know you brought down the cost before. Yeah. Uh, but you've got some good news coming. From Monday, yeah. So last January we were able to cut costs for uh, parents for childcare by about, on average, 25%. And we're going to do that again from this Monday. Uh, and I know because some of my friends were sending me texts with screenshots of the emails they got from their services saying from Monday, your fees will reduce by by X or, or, or Y amount. So um, I, got, I made a commitment uh, early on as minister to see if I could half the cost of childcare. And we're going to deliver on that, uh, that commitment uh, next week. Um, you know, I, I know people who actually made decisions about when they had their kids and actually how many kids because childcare, like that was the, the cost of childcare mm. was the deciding factor. And that's, that's not right. That's, that's not something that should be, uh, you know, dictating. the key dictating mm. those key families, family mm. decisions. Um, so as well as doing the work on cutting the cost for parents, I've also been very eager to improve pay for childcare professionals because they do an amazing job. Uh, it's such an important role and they're not paid well enough. So they've seen two pay increases uh, through uh, pay agreements that uh, we, the government supported over the last three years. Um, and we've also supported the childcare providers themselves, the businesses themselves with core funding, this new funding stream that I introduced uh, to uh, two years ago. So a lot has happened over the last four years uh, as I've been minister, but I'm also really conscious that we have a long way to go to bring early learning and care in Ireland to where it is in the rest of Europe. So what I've been saying is that if the Greens are in the next government, and these are these are things we'll set out in our manifesto, there are kind of three key things that I'd love to see. I think every child should have a legal right to the two years of ECC, the, the two free uh, preschool years. That should be a legal right in the same way you have a legal right to primary and secondary school. Secondly, in areas where we don't have enough services to provide those two years. The state should, uh, the state should intervene. Mm. The state should actually be providing yeah. childcare. And that's that's a big change. Uh, and it's not the state replacing everybody because they do it alongside the existing providers, but the state should be a player in the provision of, uh, of, of early years education. And, by, and, and then we also need to continue to raise, uh, raise uh, wages for childcare professionals, because if they don't aren't well paid, they're going to go into other sectors and we'll, we'll, we'll be in crisis. So all that's going to, going to cost money. We have to be very, very frank about that. I've basically doubled investment in childcare over the last four years, but we really need to be looking at kind of what the, the percentages that other European countries are spending uh, if we're going to be able to deliver these. But because of the work that I've done over the last four years, I think we can. We've we've made the reforms. We've got the structures put in place there to make a really big difference. So always wary of saying a lot done, more to yeah. do. But like it's it's really genuine here. We've made very significant steps. Um, but I think we need a couple more years of focus on this, and certainly that's something we'll set out in real detail uh, when we have a, a general election yeah, and when I, our, our manifesto is completed. I think it's important to give people hope as well because there's always so much focus in the news and everything of all the things that haven't haven't happened and we haven't done. So it's really good to hear about the amazing work you have done on childcare. It's by no means sorted, but mm-hmm. as you've mm-hmm. outlined, we've lots, we've yeah. lots more to do. Yeah. But I think it's good to give people hope. Yeah. You know, they say, Molinoya, Chukichi, if you, if you nurture the youth, they will flourish. Yeah. And like, if we can get childcare right and take the stress out of parents' lives, mm-hmm. that means you've got less stressed kids. Yeah. And then kids can grow into beautiful, happy adults that will continue the good work that we, we've done, um, you know, around putting kids first. Yeah. So I think yeah. it's really important work. And it's, it's key to community and family structures that we have good childcare facilities mm-hmm. and other states do this. We can do this. Yeah. So, and, and I think it's about the wider Green Party focus on children and on families. So we've increased mm. paid parents' leave. It was two, uh, two weeks per child where, per parent when I uh, became minister. We've brought it up to nine weeks mm. now. So that's a big jump for each parent. We've increased breastfeeding breaks. We've brought in the right to apply for um, 
remote and flexible working for carers. So we've been very much focused on allowing parents spend as much time as possible mm. with their kids in those those key early uh, weeks and months after a child is born, but then supporting parents in terms of whether they want to go back to work, both want to go back to work full time or some sort of flexible time a, a, across both parents. We have to give parents the choice uh, in terms of uh, in terms of how they balance their work life with their home life. Yeah, I mean, as a single parent, I have to say uh, the childcare issue, the, the, the hospital was a huge yeah. factor for mm -hmm. me. And mm -hmm. um, I wasn't getting any maintenance or anything, so I had to kind of figure it all out myself. So the fact that you bring the cost down, I'd love if you'd been the minister <laughs> when I was trying to go through all that. And like I stacked the childcare centre in Kilfenora yeah, back yeah. in the day for my son and other people. There wasn't any childcare proper place in Kilfenora at the time. And it was a real struggle. And yeah. we had to fundraise loads and mm -hmm. the whole community got behind it. Mm. It's still going strong 20 years later. It's still there. But they're getting funding now that I had never yeah. even imagined was you available. You must be very proud of that, are you? Yeah, it's good. Yeah. I mean, it's good yeah. all the children have come along since, yeah. you know, yeah. so no, it's good. It's really cheap. Burn sun as kindergarten, yeah. yeah. Bring yeah. sun yeah. to the kids' eyes. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, thanks. It's great. It's great. Finally, you see progress put the children first, mm -hmm. so it's not forcing people to stay at home or forcing people to have to go out to work. Mm -hmm. Extra extra hard to cover the costs. Yeah. We, we want quality of life. It's yeah, about quality exactly. of life here. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I think you really prioritise that. Thanks, yeah. Look, um, we'll, we'll chat again next week. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks okay. again. Talk thanks. to you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.